Radio. I'm your host and founder of Alzheimer's Speaks, Lori LeBay. And the reason that we started this show was because my mom had dementia for 30 years, and it was just one of those things that we thought we need to raise people's voices. We need um, people to be able to connect and find the support that they so badly deserve um, in this world today. And so we are really excited to have you join us today. For those of you that are new to our show, basically Alzheimer's Speaks is a is an advocacy group that provides multiple platforms to to help elevate everyone's voice. So we we love to hear from people who are diagnosed and living with dementia, their family and friends, advocates, business professionals, singers, songwriters, um authors, movie directors, researchers, you name it, your voice is welcomed here because it takes all of us on this journey to work together and to to really have um, have and live a full, full, rich life. We also invite you, if you have a story to tell, to reach out to me. You can just go to alzheimerspeaks.com. That's our main web page and click on the contact button in the upper right-hand corner and tell me your story and maybe we can schedule you as our next guest on the show. Uh, It's so important for us to hear uh, from you and storytelling is, I think, just such an effective way to help people understand what it's really like to to live and walk alongside uh, dementia itself. So again, thank you all for listening, and don't forget to like and click and share this episode with your spheres of influence. If it's on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or your LinkedIn colleagues, wherever you like to hang out, because there are people in your sphere that you probably don't even know that are dealing with this, and they need to hear this information. So today we're going to talk about something really exciting, memory camp experiences. And what the heck is a memory camp? And we have two phenomenal people who have made such a huge impact, not just in Wisconsin, where they're from, but really around the world. Um, We are so lucky to have Susan McFadden with us, and she is a PhD and a professor emeritus of psychology at the University of Wisconsin, um, Oshkosh, and then her husband, John McFadden, who is a ordained minister um, at the United Church of Christ, and he served as a parish minister for 34 years. They've written a book together called Aging Together, Dementia, Friendship, and Flourishing Communities. It was published by John Hopkins University, and it was released in paperback in 2014. But they have also um, just done phenomenal work with a group called or a project called the Fox Valley Memory Project. And they're both Susan and John um, help support um, a memory cafe by volunteering once a month. But they have multiple memory cafes there and their their leadership and their support has just um it's just been amazing and today we're going to talk with them about one of their new ventures and adventures which is the memory um the memory camp and so john has to leave early and so we're going to go ahead and have him kick us off and tell us a little bit about why the heck you decided to try a memory cafe and what the heck heck is it? So, John, if well, you wouldn't mind sharing with us. Oh, I'd be glad to, Laurie, and to whoever might be listening with us today. Uh, 
as Laurie indicated, we've had uh, about five, six years uh, with the Fox Valley Memory Project, which is a multifaceted, dementia-inclusive community effort to support folks in all stages of a progressive condition and those who care for them and to kind of open up the community to including our friends who are living with the reality of dementia. And this is what we're talking about today is not an actual program of the Memory Project. We learned about a church camp, and many listeners may have had church or YMCA camp experiences, including family camps. But this one for 10 years has been doing specialized camps for kids and teens on the autism spectrum. Uh, Four weeks a summer, including uh, several weeks that are family inclusive. And we just thought it would be wonderful if there were a way to open up the experience of family camp and all things that that means in terms of outdoor recreation, bonding with nature, building a community of friendship, to include those who are living with the reality of dementia. So we had about a year, Susan, I think, of mm-hmm. conversation with staff at the camp who immediately loved the concept. So we met with them, we planned with them, and found a, uh, a time that would work for a three-night memory camp that ended up including persons because we wanted different generations there. Uh, we wanted grandkids as well as grandma who might be living with dementia. So we had an age range of five to 95, and we became quite a community and had a very rich experience. Susan, why don't you jump in and talk a little bit about that? Oh, sure. I'd be happy to. Um, And I believe we have some campers on the line, too, which is uh, very exciting. Um, So we had, uh, this was our first year of doing memory camp, and later on in the show we can talk about what the plans are for next summer. Uh, But this past summer, as John said, we had the three nights and two full days Uh, at this gorgeous camp in the north woods of Wisconsin. Uh, It's on a lake. It has uh, very good facilities. Um, A number of the uh, areas where families um, had their beds and living area and bathroom um, are ADA accessible, so Um, anybody using a walker or we didn't have anybody in a wheelchair but we could have because we had roll-in showers in uh, some of these um, cabins uh, which are not what you would imagine perhaps a cabin to be because they were very nicely outfitted Uh, anyway um, we had five different families Um, one family was there with six siblings and one spouse of a sibling, so seven in all, two of whom are living with dementia, uh, and the age range in that family was 75 to 95, or 71 to 95, uh, and as John said, we also had two grandchildren, a five-year-old and an eight-year-old, um, so it was a marvelous intergenerational experience. Um, next summer, we um, can accommodate more uh, campers living with dementia and their families, but we wanted to start small this year just to see how it would go. Uh, So there were 24 campers in all um, from five different families. Plus some volunteers. Oh, yes. Uh, And uh, Susan and I, of course, as volunteers and camp directors, several other wonderful volunteers. And we went up, Susan and I went up a day early to train staff and volunteers uh, in hospitality and a little bit about dementia itself. So we were had, had a wonderful ratio of, uh, you know, we could give respite care to family care partners, have volunteers do one-in-one time with uh, some of our folks. But uh, just, oh, and uh, just to uh, add to the merry mix, we had uh, four members of a documentary film crew who were filming throughout. So just to... Uh, mix things up at points we had <laughs> a drone camera flying overhead and uh, boom microphones and cameras and we're looking forward to this documentary being produced because uh, we want to show folks across the country that it is possible 
to include folks with dementia in a family camping experience and to share how much joy and richness these camps can bring. So that might be something else to talk about today. Mm-hmm. Oh, wonderful! Um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to being uh, being able to see that, and I'm so glad that you had that opportunity to be able to film it because, you know, we can we can talk and we can use our words, but for people to really see it in action is going to be a whole a whole right. other piece. Um, I would like to go ahead and pull in um, some of the family members here, and we have um, with us the the Farnham clan. I'm going to refer to them. (laughs) That's what we call them. uh, (laughs) And um, I'm going to pull in Joe first. I think I have him on the line correctly, so let's see. Joe, are you with me? Uh, Yes, I am. You are. Okay. Um, Joe, thank you, first of all, for, for joining us here. Can you tell us a little bit um, about your your family and what brought you to the memory camp experience? Uh, so, yeah, my uh, father uh, has dementia, and so uh, we heard about this uh, camp through Susan and John and uh, and my mom suggested that we do this, and and uh, it was actually uh, a pretty neat idea. I think that uh, that Susan and John really did a, a fine job, especially since it was kind of the the first go at it and um, trying to figure out what you know we needed to do. So uh, uh, pretty well at this camp. Um, and so there's five of us in the family total. So the three uh, three kids and, and mom and dad, we were all there um, in one cabin. And uh, and uh, I can't say enough about how uh, really great the accommodations were there and how nice it was to see other families who were going through the same um, kind of things and at different stages, you know. Yep. And so this isn't, you know, just to make it clear to our audience, this isn't set up your tent and roll out your sleeping bag um, type camping. Can you tell us a little bit about your accommodations and how it was laid out for the for the five of you? Sure. There's there is um, really nice cabins uh, at this camp. So we uh, all stayed in one cabin, uh, three bedroom cabin. So um, there was there was plenty of room for us. Um, and there were other um, larger uh, places over there, too. I think you were talking about the family with, like, I don't know how many um, <laughs> people in it. But um, it uh, it was uh, – it, it also had Internet access, which, you know, for the three of us kids, it was a big deal <laughs> to have that. And, um, you know, it, it, everything was great. All of the accommodations at home were there, and the meals uh, were – Top notch. Um, it was like we almost were at a at a resort, you know. So uh, it was it was beautiful. Was there one um, particular moment that just stood out to you during this this vacation? Um, I would say uh, there was a couple of times. Uh, you know, near the end of the camp, we always had a uh, kind of a campfire. Um, area where uh, all of the families could meet for various things near the end of the camp. It was good to have kind of all of us there and, you know, talking about our experiences um, at the camp and, and what we were going through. So that was, that was uh, really nice. Um, And we met a lot of really nice people. Um, And then even uh, I would say the meal times uh, where we all sat at huge kind of it was the family style tables so that uh, we could meet other people and and talk about what was going on so um you know it, the togetherness was was very nice oh that's neat um john i know that you have to whoops i i'm not sure if he's there or not my computer is being strange and i keep on muting them and they keep popping back to mute here so um, John, if you're there, uh, was there anything that you wanted to say before you have to leave?
And I'm thinking that. So I might have to have them uh, call in to our line over again, and that is uh, 323-870-4602. That's 323-870-4602. John and Susan, if you can call in, because we've got a wonky connection with you, apparently. So um, thank you, Joe, for for those comments. I'm going to go and pull Lisa in. And uh, with any luck here, and see if she's live. Lisa, are you there? I'm here. Do you hear me? Oh, yes, I can hear you. I can hear you just fine. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your your thoughts on the camp experience? Um, I we as a family, we really enjoyed this experience. And uh, one of the things that I thought was very important is a lot of times in families who are dealing with a dementia patient, there's a lot of isolation. And uh, this gave my mother and our family the opportunity to, uh, to, to see and meet and even have a little break um, along the way. Uh, and I, I, it, was, it was a very nice, uh, warm, welcoming group of people. Oh, that's nice. Now, was there a, a special moment um, between uh, you and, and your dad that you remember um, during this trip at all? Um, well, we pretty much have special moments with dad every day. But um, one of the things that uh, dad enjoyed doing was walking uh, and hiking around in the woods. Uh, he had the availability. They did boat rides, and uh, there was canoeing. So there was um, there was a lot of uh, physical things and things to do. So uh, no one was bored, in particular my father. And so as a family, we could do these things. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Now, um, is your is your dad pretty mobile then? In order to be able to get in and out of a canoe and yes, my dad is very mobile. <laughs> so, so we did we didn't have any problems with that. Okay, great. And what did your mom think about this experience? I know she wasn't able to join us today, but directed you kids to get on here and and share your story. <laughs> Yes, she did. <laughs> uh, mom, mom liked it too. She, it was it was really good for her. Uh, uh, my mom uses a walker, and so the accessibility was wonderful. Uh, to to for her, she could there were there was a ramp into the to the cabin, so she was able to use her walker and and. Um, she she we just did a lot of family time which uh was a real nice opportunity for us because uh, you know with working and families and things a lot of times uh it's it's hard for everyone to get together and spend really quality time together over a period of a couple of days and this gave us and our family uh the opportunity to do it we were together Oh, nice, nice. I know when we took a vacation with my folks, when my my dad had cancer, my mom had um, brain, or uh, my mom had dementia, and my dad had brain cancer, and um, we went on a cruise, and it was just, it's probably some of the most precious memories that I have. You know, it was just so much fun, and um, bringing the whole family together, you know, with all the kids and. And then we had the grandkids and stuff there. So uh, wonderful. I'm going to go ahead and pull Laura in. And, um, and again, uh, John and Susan, if you can call in to the line, that would be great, which is 323-870-4602. That's 323-870-4602. And Laura, are you there? I am here. Okay, well, good. Uh, my muting and unmuting is working for you guys. <laughs> I don't know about uh, John and Susan there. Um, well, thank you, too, for, for joining us and, and taking time. I know you guys are all kind of on your lunch break from work, and I really appreciate it because it's just so nice to hear the, about the family experience. What are your thoughts about the Memory Cafe? What would you like people to know? Um 
I think it is for 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 someone like myself who is not an uh, I I don't live with my dad. I mean, we are uh, available as backup caretakers to uh, my mother and my sister. This really gave us an opportunity to say, you know what, we're not going to be doing work. We're not doing anything else. We're just pulling back and going to be with our family and with nature and with other people, and it, it, it was good on many levels. Just to get away, just to, you know, my, my brother said they had internet, but basically we unplugged for those three days. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was helpful also. Uh, and spending time with my dad, I mean, he still enjoys so many things. He's, he's as, a, as an, uh, an, a, a person with Alzheimer's, it's, it's not like, I mean, his life hasn't stopped. And he, he he enjoys a lot of things, and it's really still fun to be with him to do some things. Uh, he and I did a lot of walks in the woods. We liked that. We were, were pointing out animals that we would find. Uh, we There were some activities that were, I believe, much like some uh, group art activities that might be done also not in a camp. You know, the, I, I think my mom and, and him do some similar kind of art projects and things while they're at home, but I didn't have a chance to do any of those because I'm working during the day. So this was a chance for me to do some of these things with uh, with my father. Uh, we loved the music. There was lots of music and tons of laughter all the time. Um, everyone was as nice as they could be. Uh, what else did we do? We went on boat rides. Uh, you know, we could take you could take rowboats out. We took paddle boats out. There was swimming. I mean, it, it truly was like a resort. Um, with just a small community. Uh, the McFaddens were wonderful. They they really made everyone feel very welcomed, and we understood what was going on um, right away. And we enjoyed talking to the other the other families. Um, mm-hmm. Met some people. They were all different ages, so we could meet people that were like ourselves and, and talk about some of the, you know, there's some challenges with this, obviously, <laughs> and it's not a picnic <laughs> all the way. And so... <laughs> Uh, but it was just nice to share things. And just one small incident, and it's, it seems small, but to me it was really important. It was during what, the, the final dinner that we had was a, was a beautiful, I mean, they had tablecloths. It was a wonderful food. Um, and I was sitting next to my father, and then an, another caretaker friend about my age was sitting next to me. And we were, she and I were talking, and she noticed my dad was having trouble with the silverware, which he sometimes does. And she just said, just casually, like, oh, help your dad with his knife. And it was, it's like, okay. And so <laughs> I helped him, and then we continued with our conversation. But it, you would never get that unless you're with a group of people who are used to observing and reacting to, to, to people with Alzheimer's. You don't get that kind of just casual acceptance of changes that are happening. Yeah. Well, and that support to go ahead, take time. We can pick up. You know our conversation, and, mm-hmm. you know um, it, it, that is that is a really beautiful thing, and I think it's something that people don't realize and, because so many people are isolated. Um, how powerful that is, and how appreciated that is, and how beautiful that is to just feel ex- everyone feels accepted, and no one's on edge, you know, and to remove that, to be able to remove that edginess. Um, or that, oh, what if this happens? You know, what, how how are people going to react? Just knowing it's okay. It's okay. Mm-hmm. They they get it. Um, I, I know for me personally, that was a huge, huge relief. And I hear it from people in our memory cafes and, and things all the time, how, how powerful that that was. I think we've got Susan back on the line, so I'm going to see if we can Here I am. get her. I, yep. uh, we got you back there. So yep. <laughs> sorry about that. I I put you on mute, and for whatever reason, it didn't want me to bring you back in again. So, oh, technology at its finest. But dementia teaches us patience and to go with the flow. And so, That's right. Um, I'm glad we glad we got you back there. Um, it's it's so nice to hear the stories that Joe and Lisa and Laura have been um, uh, telling us about their their camp experience and how gracious of hosts you were and how comfortable they felt and, and the memories that were established. Can you tell us, um, Susan, a little bit about how did you how did you even choose the location? Because that's not an easy thing to do uh, to be able to find a place. Um, that you feel is going to work for for a you know a new venture. 
Right. Um, well, let me back up a little bit and um, just say that the original inspiration for doing a memory camp was an organization in England called Dementia Adventure. And I told the Farnham family about this when I uh, spoke with them last winter uh, to kind of get them excited about the possibility of camp. Uh, This organization in England uh, takes people having dementia and their care partners on amazing trips, like five-day sailing trips and hiking trips, all over England and oh they do all kinds of interesting things and um, so I had known about them for a couple of years and have followed them on um, various social media platforms and was able to have a Skype conversation with their executive director and their training director um, last summer well no actually last spring before camp um, and you know just to tell them that they had inspired us to do this and ask them for advice and that was very helpful so what I want people to know is that um, this is possible and it's happening in other places and um, anybody who's curious just needs to google dementia adventure and you can you can see what's possible. So back to your question, Lori, about uh, how did we know about the camp. Um, this is a camp of the United Church of Christ, which, as you said in the introduction, is the uh, denomination where John uh, spent his career being a pastor. Um, and so we had known about this camp for a very long time and had our, actually our children went to the camp and um, we'd known the director of the camp for a long time. So, so we had a sense of the, um, of the quality at the camp. We also had um, been involved in various capital campaigns to um, uh, support the camp and to um, replace some big buildings that you know had aged and needed to um, either be repaired or replaced. Um, so we were quite familiar with it, although um, it really was important for us to visit the camp um, uh, to so that would have been summer before last we went up there to visit uh, during a time when they had the youth and families with autism. Um, uh, at the camp and and so that gave us a sense of the staff members who really were um, so open to um, making good experiences for people living with various kinds of disabilities and um, to understand their um, safety um, precautions and that was of course very important for us Um, and to walk the camp and to imagine what it would be like to have folks living with dementia and care partners and family members there. Uh, So it it took us about a year to, um, well, maybe a year and a half to be more realistic to get ready for this, but um, the staff is very competent and professional and, um, and caring. So that helps a lot. And I truly believe that there are camps like this all over the country. Um, And that um, I'm hoping with this documentary film that it will be shown widely and that other people will say, hmm, we could do this uh, and um, begin to um, explore these kinds of possibilities. Oh, that's wonderful. I know in Minnesota there's a group that um, for 40 years has been um, bringing people on adventures called Wilderness Inquiry. And, you know, they're they're a nonprofit, and their mission is to provide people of all ages and abilities and backgrounds experiences outdoors. So um, you can do something from, you know, just canoeing down uh, a river here locally to go on over to Africa and they can accommodate a single person and, um, or, and or coordinate a family adventure, you know, whatever you want. But I, I too believe that there are, there are more places out there than we know of because we don't, 
we're not connective enough, you know, to talk and to share. And mm-hmm. so that's why I, I loved this experience. I want to go back to uh, the Farnham clan here because I want to be respectful of their time and just see if they had any other comments that they wanted to make because I want to get them back to work on time. So, Joe, <laughs> um, is, there, is there anything else that you would like to add to the conversation before you have to go back to work? Sorry, Joe, are you there? Muted there. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> um, so one uh, one thing that I would bring up is that um, uh, depending on the level of uh, you know the stage of dementia, um, you know things could be a little different. There was, um, uh, you know, my father when he's in new surroundings, um, gets pretty confused uh, for a little while till, till things kind of settle down and he, and he understands, you know, he's in a different place and it's not the same routine and everything. Um, so um, I don't know um, at what stage uh, it becomes more difficult for a dementia patient or not to be, you know, off in a camp somewhere. Um, and, and I would say that probably 80% of the time my father was happy to be there, but 20% of the time there was the confusion came in, you know, uh, one morning he woke up and he didn't know where he was or what, or who we were, you know, and then it, it, it snaps back, you know, but, um, so, uh, I just thought I would mention that because, you know, it was, it was a little, um, I don't know. I wouldn't say that it worried us too much because we've seen this before, but, um, you know, some level, uh, at some level, uh, it, it might be a little difficult. Um, but, you know, again, for the most part, it was, uh, it was a good experience, not just for him, uh, but for all of us, so. Mm-hmm. Right. And, um, Susan, any comments to that? Because I, I know that that oh, is I'm, something common. Yes, and, um, Joe, I really appreciate that. And um, I'm writing down a few notes because I think that it would be helpful to be um, up front with that um, when talking about the camp for next year for people who might – be considering it to say, um, you know, you do need to take that into account. How does your loved one um, respond to new situations? Um, It certainly helps to have the family around, um, and so you're kind of a constant um, for the individual, but it is a brand-new environment with new people and um, you know, a new place to eat your meal and a different place to sleep. So um, I I think most families are going to understand that, um, but I think that um, that point is something that I'd like to include in my um, promotional materials to address that so that people are thinking about that. Um, And certainly um, staff are aware that that can be a challenge and, and the volunteers also, um, but I, you know, I really hear what you're saying, and I want to, I want to pay attention to that. So thanks a lot. I, I appreciate that. Great. And and um, Joe, feel free to to stay with us too. I just don't want you to feel like you have to if you need to run. So thank you so much for your comments. I'm going to go ahead and pull um, Lisa in next. And see if uh, if you have any other comments that you would like to say. I don't know if you need to scoot off to work or or not. I do, but I just wanted to say again that uh, it was a a very wonderful experience for all of us, um, and uh, we're looking forward to doing it again next year if they have it. Yay, we will. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. Thank you for your time, Lisa. Appreciate it. Thank and you. And Laura, Laura, how about you? Any uh, any last comments that you'd like to like to say? Uh, well, one thing was 
this was something that we as a family could plan. We anticipated it. I mean, we we had we we talked about what we were going to bring, and uh, it, and it was it was exciting to have something to really look forward to as a family um, for for months. And we kept, you know, we talked about it, and so and and, and we were very very excited, and we all caravanned out to the. Uh, to the to the resort and and then we had a wonderful time and then uh, again after the uh, after the event when we got back home we still bring it up uh, you know quite regularly we talk about something that happened at the camp and so it's it's it wasn't just three days of our life it actually expanded all, uh, you know on, on both sides uh, before and after so it made it just a wonderful experience oh that's oh, a that's lovely cool. observation yeah thank Beautiful. you Laura. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that okay. is really beautiful. And again, it's all about creating moments because moments live on. You know, mm-hmm. they they stay with us and we can, you know, as the disease progresses, we can even use pictures and and things for reminiscing and you know, redirection, all kinds of stuff. And then just to settle our soul of what we did and how close we got and those those precious moments of just being. Um, is is really really nice. So th- yeah, that was that was the gr- all your comments were just wonderful to hear, and I so appreciate you guys taking taking the time to be with us. And again, if you have to drop off, feel free. And if you can hang on with us, that that would be much appreciated as well. Um, Susan, I wanted to ask you about you know the planning process and scheduling you know um activities and keeping people engaged how did you how did you balance that out so it's not so structured and so overwhelming and that allows people to have some freedom in terms of what oh, they're a, doing that's a great question um and uh really it helped a lot to be working with such um skilled camp uh staff uh, because um, they, as I, as John and I had said, they've been doing this for a number of years uh, with families living with children and teens with autism. So um, we started working on the schedule um, long before camp, uh, and um, wanted to have some set activities, but also wanted to have open time as well. And one of the um, very important aspects of this camp and I think other similar camps is a time after lunch that they call FOB time, which stands for feet on bed. And it <laughs> basically is a, it's a, it's a rest time. And it was very important to build that rest time in for everybody, for staff and volunteers and campers and family members. Um, so we made sure that that was on the schedule. Every morning uh, there was a uh, little newsletter available at people's uh, seats at breakfast that gave the schedules. And um, so it's just a one-page um, uh, printout that talked about, um, well, for example, we had beach yoga uh, and a woman came in from a nearby town and, and led anybody who wanted to in uh, doing uh, yoga uh, outdoors. Um, so that included um, uh, family care partners and some folks with dementia. But um, in one case, it was the care partner was able to go do it by herself and her husband. She was not there with any, they didn't have adult children with them, so it was just the couple. Um, and one of our volunteers sat with her husband um, and just quietly looking at the lake, just at a lovely seat down by the lake. And and she knew he was safe. She could keep her eye on him, but she could also enjoy being in the moment with this uh, yoga group. So, um, you know, it was scheduling times like that. Um, we had a craft time. Um, again, this was, you know, just optional. Anybody could do it if they wanted to, but they didn't have to. Uh, so we had scheduled times, but not overly scheduled. And um, all of, you know, that was optional. One of the things that we will do next year that we didn't do this year um, is to build in at least one um, period of time for care partners 
family members to get together and talk with each other, and then we would have a special activity for folks living with dementia um, so that we could have a kind of guided discussion um, for people to share um, some of, you know, maybe some tips that they have found that are helpful um, with their loved one um, or to raise questions or share concerns. So, um, as I say, the schedule was something that um, we really thought out uh, ahead of time, but it was um, definitely guided by the wonderful experience of the camp staff who knew how to do this. Oh, wonderful. That That's great. And I love that idea of adding that in um, next year for people. Yeah. Uh, I think that that makes a lot of sense. Um, what are some of your memorable stories, your, your and John's um, stories that touched your heart um, during oh, this experience? There were, yeah, there were a lot. Um, uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about is um, something that um, the Farnham's talked about. And and that is that um, we recognize that all the families are there, and that they have at least one loved one living with dementia. Um, but that was that was kind of put to the background. We were we were we were trying to, as I said, leave the stigma at the top of the hill, um, mm-hmm. leave the labels at the top of the hill. Um, while we were all sensitive to the fact that. Um, we had campers living with dementia. Um, we didn't want to be, you know, totally focusing on that all the time. Um, and we, we, it, before the camp uh, started, while we were in the, still in the planning stage, we were trying to figure out, well, what should we call this? And because we have memory cafes, uh, we thought, well, we'll call it memory camp. Um, and, you know, that kind of, I think, helped people make connection between the kind of stigma-free zone that you experience at a memory cafe, um, a memory cafe being a place where the focus is on um, hospitality and inclusion uh, and friendship. And so we wanted to carry that over to the camp. Uh, so we called it memory camp <laughs> um but i think that um that's that's one of my um real kind of memories of um the first day as we were waiting for the campers to arrive i stood actually at the top of the hill uh with another volunteer to to greet people and um really had that sense of okay now you are entering into this special environment this caring beautiful place where you don't need to think about dementia 24-7 even though um, you know that you will be safe here because um, people um, understand um, how to respond appropriately to, um, you know, say if, if somebody is confused about where they are or feeling anxious, something like that. Um, I I felt tremendous um, respect for uh, the courage that it took for these families to take this risk of coming to this brand new experience never done before um, that they are driving up to this Northwoods place um, you know kind of off a dirt road and, and um, you know just to to come into the unknown like that, I just have, um, I honor the people who made the decision to do that um, because I think that did take courage. We had one family that um, a daughter drove in late at night from um, Madison, Wisconsin. Another daughter drove in from Minnesota. I mean, you know, these are families, and, and like the Farnhams too, these families made a real sacrifice to do this. Uh, they had to plan ahead to get time off from work. Um, they had, in some cases, they had to get child care for their own children. Um, you know, so I just, I, I have so much regard for the families who um, are caring for 
a loved one living with a dementia and and the fact that they were willing to step out of their comfort zones to take the risk to come to this brand new thing i think that's just amazing and wonderful i i do too and i you know i loved how how they talked about um you know when you were you were talking about the name of the camping um mm-hmm. you know the, the memory camp but it really is about these memories that are that will just keep popping up you know and mm-hmm. relive and yeah. uh, and that's just such a beautiful beautiful thing i mean that's something um you know they'll have for a lifetime i mean that's a, a legacy piece that can be passed on those stories to their kids and their grandkids and and right. um it, and just relived in the moment which is um, there was, which is yeah, really cool there was one family there who um uh, were familiar with this camp and had come to the camp for many years and had brought their children to this camp. In fact, the first time they had been at the camp, one of the children was in diapers. Now the mom has has a dementia. She was diagnosed about a year ago, well, a little longer now, um, with um, neurocognitive disorder major of the Alzheimer's type, the language that we're using today. And Mm -hmm. so that family came with uh, two adult daughters and then two grandchildren. And um, so there's a family that the mom, who now has a dementia, had had her young daughter there many years before and is now there with her daughter and her grandchildren. And they were so happy to be able to introduce the grandchildren to this place that had meant so much to them earlier in their lives. Um, oh, so I how think cool that's that? a yeah, that's a, a memory that stands out to me about how meaningful that was to them. Oh, and again, very powerful. I think, right, and again, I think that that um, probably is true for um, camps around the country that have um, have had at least some portion of their camp schedule include family camps Um, because often with family camps families go summer after summer after summer because they meet people and then they say oh let's do this again next summer and Mm -hmm. um, so um, that that is an important part of a lot of people's lives and as they get older some of them may have a dementia um, so that should not prevent them from continuing to come to this beloved place. So I really would like to encourage people to think about that um, in other locations around the country. Oh, that's that's wonderful. I I just think it's so neat, and I think it will. Um, I think it'll spread, just like the Memory Cafe did, because people are looking for those spots, kind of those sacred spots to be able to share mm-hmm. and love and laugh and cry and and just be. And and like you said, um, it's dementia brings us together, but it really takes a back seat. You know, we're really getting yeah. to the meat of the person, of, of who yeah. they are as a whole. And, uh, you know, being able to help families find that space, because some families really struggle with that, um, sure. I, I think is just a really cool thing. And then how they how they mentor one another and how uh, I'm sure some, some friendships um, were made during that time where people are probably talking um, still, you know, to Mm -hmm. one another. I I liked how Lisa, Lisa said it was fun. I mean, how often do you hear the word fun associated with dementia? (laughs) Not very often. And, and um, Laura talked about lots of laughter again. Um, those of us who um, work with folks having dementia and, and, you know, we'd go to memory cafes or we work in um, memory care communities, um, we know there can be fun and laughter. Um, but most of people who don't have that experience would never associate that with dementia because, um, you know, still the narrative is so dark about it. Um, so I think that that's an important component of this also. And then, you know, something that we really haven't talked so much directly about, but it is the experience of being in this natural environment. There's so 
meaningful. And I think that um, as people uh, live with a dementia, um, so often we become so risk adverse. Um, you know, we have reasonable concerns about people having a fall or something like that. So you obviously want to make sure that we're paying attention to safety. Um, but still, a lot of people are deprived of being in natural settings. And and uh, we know from tons of research how important that is for people um, living with dementia and people in general uh, to have that opportunity to be in um, these natural settings. So I, that, you know, the place adds so much uh, to mm-hmm. the overall experience. Yeah, and, and that reminds me of um, Harry Urban, who lives with dementia out in Pennsylvania. One of my favorite comments from him was, you know, revel in my peacefulness. Join me mm-hmm. on my bench. Um, feel the breeze you know, smell, smell the flowers or the grass, listen to the birds, you know, but just it, that, that sense of nature and being connected and that it's okay to, to not always have to fill the space other than mm-hmm. just be in the space. Um, right. uh, we only, I can't believe we only have 10 minutes left here, um, but I want, to, I want to make sure that we talk about the next memory um, camp. And, okay. um, and a little bit about the, the documentary, too, if you've got time. <laughs> sure. Um, well, I um, don't know. I'll take the second one up first. I don't know when the documentary will be released. Um, I um, have been in touch with the producer, and, you know, it takes a long time. I mean, I have no idea how many hours of film they have, but you know, the the film may end up being 10 minutes long. I'm not sure. Um, but um, I am hoping that it will be ready for some conferences this spring um, so that, you know, we can get the word out and um, people maybe could start planning for summer of um, 2020 uh, so, because it really does take about a year to, you know, pull everything together. But in the summer of 2019, we will have two sessions of Memory Camp. I should say that um, the official name of the camp, the camp location, is Moon Beach. So it's Moon Beach Camp, and it's on Moon Lake up in um, northern Wisconsin near the little town of St. Germain, um, not far from another little town that's maybe better known named Eagle River. So it's a, it's a very um, valued part of Wisconsin uh, that a lot of people have heard about. So next summer we will have a session in June, from June 12th to the 15th, and then we will also have another session in August, August 19th to the 22nd. So June 12th to 15th and June 19th to 22nd, um, and, or August uh, excuse me, June 12th to the 15th and August 19th to the 22nd. Um, and um, uh, the registration is not open yet, um, but it. W- I think after the first of the year, they'll probably start open up the registrations. Um, and, you know, we're just hoping to get the word out and, and um, have people come and experience what's possible at memory camp really to go back. I want to return to an important point that Joe made about, you know, where people are on the spectrum of dementia. Mm -hmm. Um, First of all, we don't care what kind of dementia you have. And, and like we say at the memory cafes, we don't ask for your diagnosis at the door. Um, (laughs) So, um, you know, that's, that's something that's, people can deal with on their own. They know that this is for people living with a dementia, and that's all we say. Um, Mm -hmm. But um, so, but Joe talked about um, that, um, you know, the stage of dementia or whatever. uh, And I think families are good at assessing that. And I'm putting my trust in the family to understand that this, yes, this might be a good thing for mom or dad, or maybe it might not be quite right. Um, So 
I, I really think the families can make that decision um, and to understand that it's um, three nights and two full days and and we'll offer as much support and comfortable accommodations and great food um, uh, to really make it a good experience. Yeah, but this is not a um, – sometimes I think uh, – I, I know this um, – we had some of this with the crews where people wanted – a lot of um, care partners wanted a respite. And mm-hmm. so they wanted to go out on a vacation and bring their person but not be responsible for them. And it was like, no, that's not what our cruise was about, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, be- mm-hmm. Because, A, that's really hard to evaluate over the phone without seeing mm-hmm. somebody. And then between the time of intake and the time of the trip, that can all change, as we know. Exactly. So uh, right. knowing that, you know, you're still responsible, you know, for – the, um, your family or your group mm-hmm. of friends, whatever you choose to, to come as, um, uh, but you're the, definitely there to support them, but it's not your primary um, intent to to mm-hmm. be a respite, a respite camp, I guess. Mm-hmm. Right. I <laughs> mean, that. there, as, as we said, there is, there's some respite built in and next year we're going to do more of that in terms mm-hmm. of, you know, a, a scheduled time when care partners can pull away and talk with each other um, mm-hmm. with a scheduled time for um, people having dementia, probably to do a creative engagement kind of activity. One of the things mm-hmm. we didn't talk about is the fact that Ann Basting, who um, is the founder of Time Slips, uh, creative storytelling, and Time Slips now is much more than that, but anyway, Ann. Um, came over and uh, spent a morning leading an activity with us. So that was a real treat oh, cool. to have this internationally known person come. And she came with her parents, um, who happened to have a cabin not far from the camp. Um, and she's also married to the documentary filmmaker who is making the <laughs> film. So uh, it was kind of a family thing. Um, but um, I'm picturing next year that, you know, we'll have that kind of creative engagement time and that the care partners can um, pull away and talk with each other. So that'll be important. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for all this great information. I I just wish you guys the very best. And please, when registration opens, uh, please send me information. We'll put that out on the blog to our social media. And and if when the documentary um, film is done, if that's something I can help share on sure. um, social media, again, I would I would be more than glad to do that for you. Great. I just I, I adore what you and John have done. I mean, it's just incredible. Um, and you just feel like the Energizer buddies. You're retired, but you're still <laughs> going. You're still going strong. And I also right. <laughs> want to thank the uh, the Fardum clan for, for joining us with their insights and thoughts. It was just really fun to hear a family's perspective of this, yes. this journey of going camping together and, and the beautiful um, accommodations so you don't have to worry about roughing it too much. That's there. right. <laughs> Even Internet, John said, so that was, or yes. Joe said, so that was good. And people can um, reach you and John by email. And yep. we also have posted. Um, the Fox Valley uh, Memory Project down so people can get additional information there. Mm -hmm. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the uh, Dementia Adventures and the Wilderness Inquiry um, information too so that people have that. So again, thank you so much, Susan. It's always such a pleasure to to speak with you and and hear what your what you guys are up to. It's just fascinating. So keep up the great work and and thanks okay. again. Okay. Well, okay. thank you, Lori, for giving us the opportunity. Bye bye. Okay. Bye now. Bye everyone. Have a blessed week. It's time to rethink, renew, and reimagine retirement. Hey, everybody. Jared Sebesta here, host of Retire Repurposed. Now, this podcast is about the non-financial parts of retirement, which many times can be even more challenging than the financial. We believe retirement is not the end, rather the beginning of what could be the most impactful, purposeful, and fulfilling season of a person's life. So don't retire. Become repurposed. 
To listen now, search Retire Repurpose on your favorite podcast platform, Senior Resource, or Life Audio.